G'day again guys and thank you for joining me. Today's piece is once again a little bit of an extension on the last piece I created. Now you may remember the butterfly with that awful, awful flower. Um, that piece really left me feeling disappointed in the outcome. Um, I felt like I had rushed through the flower too much and as a result it just really didn't end up looking like what I wanted it to look like. Um, flowers have traditionally been an element that really challenges me. I've drawn plenty of flowers over the years, but I often feel like they fall short of my expectations. I feel like I want better contrast, better texture, better lighting. I just, I kind of just want them to be better overall. And of course, the only way to do that is to draw more of them. I really feel like one of the most important things for myself as an artist is that I work to identify things that I find challenging and then I go out and I tackle that beast. This method of learning by going out and trying to do the things that I find most difficult has, of course, over the years led to many failures. Um, like that flower that I smushed together last time. But I find I also learn a lot this way. And I find that if I'm not at least a little bit terrified that I'm about to ruin the entire artwork at least 80% of the time, then um, where's the fun in that? <laughs> Just quietly, um, I must admit to sometimes feeling a little bit jealous of artists who really specialise in their subjects. Someone who paints beautiful landscapes or seascapes or just or only does birds. And they really work to perfect that subject just over and over again. And it shows in their works over the years, they become just amazing and they become well known for that particular style or subject. But it seems I just can't be that person. I just, I find too many things that excite me and that I want to create. And I just end up running around like a little kid at the playground, trying to play on all the equipment that is just way too far out of my reach. Now, this flower, I think it's a dahlia, please correct me if I'm wrong, but this one caught my eye because of those repeating patterns of the petals. I knew that it was lack of patience that led me to have a less than satisfactory result the last time. And I could just tell that I was going to have to use a lot of patience to complete this piece. So, of course, I started this drawing out very impatiently by simply tracing the outline onto a piece of white pastel mat. I chose the pastel mat because I'm trying to get through a stack that I bought on Amazon. My local art shop finally has a big rack of pastel mat in stock, and if I get through this pile that I have, I'll be able to justify going in and buying some larger sheets, which makes me really excited to create some larger colour pencil works in the future. I worked on this drawing rather methodically, starting at the centre and working my way out. I found that this was the easiest way to keep track of where I was up to and not get lost in all of those petals. As I worked, I found that they were all quite different from each other. Looking at the different stages of opening and the varied angles in relation to the viewer meant that I really had to slow down and really study the reference photo for each and every single petal. At no point was I able to just get into autopilot and assume that I knew what the next petal was going to look like, and I must admit that I was, I was really surprised to find it just how different they were. Once again, demonstrating that you really don't know what something looks like until you really stop still and study it, which of course is one of my favourite things about creating realistic art. I found that I used only a very small handful of colours in this piece. I think it was 11 pencils all up. And I stuck to my polychromos because they just work so well on the pastel matte surface. I stuck to a fairly monochromatic colour scheme of pinks and reds. Um, so the main colours there are the fuchsias, the alizarin crimson and nice barbie pink, um, which is the pink matter lake. Uh, they really make up the majority of this piece. I did have a little trouble at start trying to decide which colours I would use for the very deepest shadows, um, but in the end I ended up using the Burnt Carmine, the Mauve and a little bit of Payne's Grey just for the very, very darkest, darkest areas. 
I used the ivory as the main light tone throughout this piece and just as I came to the end I just smattered around a little bit of the light cadmium um, which just gave a little orange tone a nice little glow that really set off a lot of those pinks. Overall this piece it felt a little bit frustrating to create. The repetitive pattern and limited colours did feel a little bit tedious at times and I did find that I had to get up and take regular breaks so that I wasn't getting you know too bogged down in the process but I did find it very satisfying to come back to the desk each time and see just a little bit more of that circle done. Um, it was really just kind of like the pieces falling into place and that was a little reward that made all of that tedious work well worthwhile. So here's the final piece and overall I quite like this one. It's a very simple subject but the pattern is quite striking and while I did struggle through some tedious moments overall I quite like the end result. I do have an hour-long real-time video showing you how I layered the colours backwards and forth to create this piece over on my Patreon page available now, so I do hope you'll pop by if you're interested in that. But for now, I am working on the most adorable new piece at the moment. Um, I do have my works in progress over on my Facebook and Instagram page if you'd like to see what's coming along next. But for now, I do hope you've enjoyed this. Please leave me a like or a comment to tell me what you think and if you would like to see some more of my work then why not hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching guys.